Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we have a powerful short lecture from Dr. Joseph Murphy called Realize Your Desire. Here, Joseph Murphy talks about the gift of desire and how to realize it. It's succinct and perfect. Realize your desire. Desire is the gift of God. Browning said, Tis thou God who giveth, tis I who receive. Desire pushes man. It is the goal of action. It is behind all progress. Desire for health, happiness, true place, abundance, and security. All these are messengers of the infinite within you, saying to you, Come on up higher. I have need of you. Desire is behind all progress. It is the push of the life principle within you. It is due to desire that we jump out of the way of an oncoming bus. We do this because we have a basic desire to preserve our life. The farmer plants seeds due to his desire to attain food for himself and his family. Man builds airplanes and spaceships due to his desire to collapse time and space and explore the world. Desire is the push of the infinite, telling us of something which, if accepted by us, will make our life fuller and happier. The greater the expected benefit from the desire, the stronger is our desire. Where there is no expected benefit, gain or advancement accruing, there is no desire. Consequently, no action is found. Failure to realize our desires to be, to do, and to have over a long period of time result in frustration and unhappiness. You are here to choose happiness, peace, prosperity, and all the blessings of life. Your desire enables you to say, this is good, therefore I choose it. However, this is negative so I reject it. All choice implies the perception of something preferable over what is rejected. The idea which some schools of thought have of annihilating and suppressing desire is disastrous in its consequences. If man succeeded in this, good and evil would be alike to him, for nothing has any power to raise any desire in him. He would become dead to all feeling and to all motive of action. Your desire means you choose one thing in preference to another, and where desire is extinguished, no such capacity to choose can exist. Troward, author of many mental and spiritual textbooks, points out Indian devotees who in pursuance of their resolve to crush out all desire both for good and evil alike, become attenuated human forms, hopeless wrecks of what were once living men. Judge Troward points out that extinction of desire means apathy, no feeling and no action. Desire is the cause of all feeling and all action, and is the moving principle of the universe. Desire is the creative power. It must be channeled and directed wisely. Desire in its fulfillment takes place in your own mind. There are no evil desires in the true sense. For example, if you're poor, you desire wealth. If you're sick, you desire health. Health would be your savior. If you're in prison, freedom would be your savior. If you're dying of thirst in the desert, water would be your savior. You may desire love, companionship, or perhaps true place. The realization of your desire is your savior. You may misdirect or misinterpret your desire which wells up within you. The man who desires wealth may, in his ignorance, fulfill his desire by killing a banker or robbing a store. This is misdirection of his desire, and he finds himself in jail, charged with murder. Teach a man that there is an infinite intelligence within him which created the universe and all things therein contained, and it can fulfill all his desires, and he overcomes a sense of opposition and frustration. 
Man's desire for food is legitimate and normal, but killing someone in order to get a loaf of bread breeds violence, opposition, guilt, and self-destruction. There is a power within man which will lift him up, set him on the high road to happiness, health, peace of mind, and the realization of his fondest dreams without depriving any other person of his blessings. A man who was broke, out of work, and frightfully frustrated came to one of my lectures some time ago and listened to the four steps in prayer. He went home and applied them. He had never heard a lecture on the mind, but he said, this makes sense. He made a list of three things he wanted. You might call them material, but they were his needs, and he was entitled to them. The items on the list for this man were true place, an automobile, and all the money he needed. He chose these concrete things to see if his thoughts were things. He wanted to prove to himself that the idea of the thing was the thing itself. What is an automobile? Isn't it a spiritual idea outside your door? Supposing all the motors in the world were destroyed by some holocaust. Couldn't an engineer draw a new design and we'd roll them off by the millions? Where do you suppose the automobile is? Isn't it in the mind of the engineer? Every single thing you look at came out of the invisible mind of man, or the invisible mind of the infinite. That's where wealth is, and health, and everything else. I said in the lecture, the idea was the reality back of the form. Just like an idea of a book, which I'm writing, where is it? It's in my own mind. He established a definite method of working and practiced it conscientiously every day sticking to it long enough to give it a fair chance. This man knew that you do not learn to swim after one or two attempts. He prayed for true place as follows. I know infinite intelligence responds to me. It is now revealing my true talents to me. I am aware of my hidden talents. I am receiving a wonderful income. I know the idea of true place and its manifestation are one in divine mind. I follow the lead which comes into my conscious, reasoning mind. It's impossible for me to miss it. It comes clearly, distinctly, and I recognize it. Within two weeks from the day his experiment began, he signed a contract for a job in San Francisco. He gave thanks and rejoiced in the law of his own mind. He then went on to the next objective, a new car. He didn't have the money to buy it. He said to me, I know I have the idea of a car. It is real, and I'm going to remain faithful to it. It must manifest. He won a car in a raffle contest. He knew the secret of the subconscious, that if he identified himself mentally and emotionally with the idea, the subconscious would bring it to pass. He was very thankful. His next request was more wealth. Each morning and evening, during his prayer period, he gave thanks for God's riches circulating in his life, claiming that his idea of wealth was fulfilled. He fell in love with a wealthy widow in San Francisco and she financed his new business. This man established a definite method of working, claiming each of his desires as already fulfilled. He claimed each one separately, but all at the same time during his morning and evening meditative period. If you pray like the above-mentioned man, and if no improvement at all shows itself within a couple of weeks, scrap that method and adopt a new one. Remember, there is an answer that is as certain as the rising sun. There's a young Demolay boy listening to me now as I'm writing this. He decreed that his subconscious mind would reveal to him the perfect plan for going to a Demolay meeting in Oregon. The way opened up, and he was invited there and all his expenses paid. Last year, he also decreed that infinite intelligence in his subconscious would reveal the perfect plan for a trip to Europe, visiting many countries. The way opened up, and all his expenses were paid by relatives. He knows how to use the deeper mind, yet he is not working. He didn't have a cent in his pocket. But the way opened up, just as it did for this man. The deeper mind responded. If he had the money, I'm sure he'd go out and buy a car but he won it in a raffle. What difference does it make how you get it? He didn't steal it. You don't have to steal anything. 
You could have the qualified capacity within you to go to that limitless storehouse within you. Claim what you want, feel it, rejoice, and it will come to pass. Cultivate simplicity and spontaneity, knowing that whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe ye shall receive. Decide now that you can do what you long to do, that you can be what you long to be. No enlightened person today believes that a cruel fate condemns us to sickness, misery, or suffering. That's jungle belief. That's nonsense, stupid, beyond words. The God presence is the infinite life principle within you that always seeks to heal you. Its tendency is to restore you. Its tendency also is to illumine your pathway. There is nothing holding you in mediocrity or ill health or in a miserable condition but your own thoughts and false belief. Come out of the prison of fear, want, and loneliness. Cease thinking that God is an old man up in the sky with whiskers. God is the infinite presence, an infinite power, an infinite intelligence within you, which watches over you when you're sound asleep and digests your food and answers you if you say you want to wake up at two in the morning. It wakes you up, doesn't it? Realize the infinite healing presence is within you. It can restore you. It is blasphemy to say that God is punishing you. It's gross ignorance. Ignorance is the only sin in the universe, and all punishment, misery, and suffering are the consequence of ignorance. Your mind and body are one. In the field of psychosomatic medicine, they realize it is impossible to tell where the mind begins and the body ends. Research work today reveals that the hidden underlying causes of physical maladies lie in the tangled depths of the mind, in frustrated rages, in baffled desires, in jealousies and anxieties. It is silly to blame an infinite being for troubles we bring on ourselves by our wrong thinking, by our misuse of law. If you use the principle of electricity ignorantly, you'll get into trouble, won't you? You can use water to drown a child, but water isn't evil. You can make an electric mine and blow up people, but electricity isn't evil. You can fry an egg with it. How do you use it? The principles of life are not evil. It depends how we use them. What is our motivation? You can use the power of your subconscious negatively or constructively. A girl said to me that all she desired was wisdom. That is the overall desire of everyone, but our terminology is not the same. When you have wisdom, you are expressing yourself fully here and now. An automobile is a spiritual idea in front of your door. A ham sandwich when you're hungry is an answer to your prayer and is spiritual also. If you sing well on stage, it is just as spiritual as a man singing the 23rd Psalm in the choir. The man who repairs the roof of your house is performing spiritual labor just as well as a minister, a priest, or a rabbi who may be reading a text from the Bible or broadcasting a sermon. Realize that the spirit and body are one. Cease looking down your nose at material things. Stop once and for all separating the spirit of God from the flesh and blood of the world. They're one and the same. Someone asked Einstein, what is matter? He said, spirit or energy reduced to the point of visibility. The ancient Hindus 10,000 years ago said, matter is the spirit reduced to the point of visibility. They said spirit and matter are one. That matter is the lowest degree of spirit and spirit is the highest degree of matter. Every physical act, no matter how base you may consider, it is the living spirit within you, animating material form. You are not degraded or demeaned when you scrub a dirty floor or clean stables. If you're condemning anything in this world, you are demoting and depreciating yourself. Good and bad are in your own thoughts and you color everything in the universe by the way you think and feel. Do not criticize, condemn, or despise your body or the world. 
Your body is the temple of the living God. Paul says you're to glorify God in your body, and the whole wide world is the body of God. The world is the dance of God. The world is the song of God. Let us have our meditation now. At the center of your being is peace. This is the peace of God. In this stillness, you feel the strength and joy and love of His holy presence. Realize infinite intelligence leads and guides you in all your ways. It's a lamp unto your feet. It's a light upon your path. Ride the white horse, which is the Spirit of God moving in the waters of your mind. Take your attention away from the problem and dwell upon the reality of the fulfilled desire. See the accomplished fact. Rejoice in it. Always go to the end. And having seen the end, you will the means to the realization of the end. And that concludes Realize Your Desire by Dr. Joseph Murphy. The key component to understand is that all matter is spirit. All spirit is matter. And that whatever it is you desire is an idea. It's an idea out there. It's a spiritual idea. So that new house, that new car is a spiritual idea. When you embrace the fact that it is an idea, then because you are spirit, you are connected to that idea and you can bring it to pass. Desire is not a bad thing. People get the idea that they desire something, they feel guilty for their desires. We always desire. Desiring is a part of life. If you're in pain, you desire to feel better. You color everything in the universe by the way you think and feel. And you create your reality and move towards or away from your desires in the ways that you think and utilize your subconscious mind. Joseph Murphy calls this the God presence, using the words infinite intelligence. There's something special about that combination of words. It's the idea that this thing within you, this spirit that you're connected to that created the universe is much smarter and wiser than you are. It has an infinite intelligence in the way that it works. And you say to yourself, as he prayed earlier, I know infinite intelligence responds to me. It is now revealing my true talents to me. I am aware of my hidden talents. I am receiving a wonderful income. I know the idea of true place and its manifestation are one in divine mind. I follow the lead which comes into my conscious reasoning mind. It is impossible for me to miss it. It comes clearly, distinctly, and I recognize it. When you call out to infinite intelligence, when you reaffirm the power of infinite intelligence and you remind yourself of the vast possibilities available to you in connecting to that infinite intelligence, that's when all things start to happen for you. That's where the faith comes. It is an embracing of this infinite intelligence to realize your desire. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Access these images to help you find true prosperity, large sums of money, true love, radiant health and spiritual enlightenment with unique portals into the new earth.
Welcome to the Reality Revolution.